In this video, I'm going to give you a very high-level overview of the important ways that Metabase interacts with your database. Metabase is a tool for querying data in a database and visualizing the results, sort of like a visualization layer on top of your database. You build queries in Metabase, Metabase connects to your database and sends the query to the database. The database executes the query, sends the results back, and then Metabase builds a chart from the results. Your data always stays in your database. Metabase doesn't pull or store it. All that Metabase sees is the query and the results. There are two ways to build queries in Metabase, using SQL, or if you're connecting to MongoDB, MongoDB query language, and using the Graphical Query Builder. When you write a query using SQL, Metabase just sends it to the database. As far as Metabase is concerned, your SQL query is a black box. Metabase doesn't parse the SQL code, so it doesn't know which tables you're querying, which columns you're selecting, what aggregations you're using, and so on. And because Metabase doesn't know what's inside your SQL query, it can't do much with the results. For example, it can't offer you breakouts or drill downs, it can't build automatic charts, and so on. But there is another way to build queries in Metabase using the Query Builder. In the Query Builder, you assemble a query from building blocks, like tables, columns, joins, filters, summaries. And because Metabase knows exactly what's going on inside the query, it can offer you a lot of useful functionality, like if it knows that you're aggregating your data, it can offer you to disaggregate it, so drill down to individual records. Or if Metabase knows that you're using a date column in your query, it can give you a calendar widget as a filter. Or if Metabase notices that you are grouping by categorical variable, then it can automatically build a bar chart for you. At the end of the day, all the queries that you build in the step-by-step -step query builder get translated to SQL, and you can actually see the SQL that Metabase generates. But because Metabase is aware of everything that's going on in, in the query, unlike with SQL queries, it enables a lot of Metabase magic. Now you might ask, but how does Metabase know when I have a date column or which categories I have in my categorical variable if Metabase doesn't store my data? The answer is syncs and scans. Syncs, that's S, Y, and C, are a process of getting the information about the structure of your database. So stuff like what tables are there, what columns are in those tables, and what types are those columns. Scans take samples from columns to do stuff like pre-populate drop-downs for filter widgets. We only take samples of your columns, we don't store the entire column, and you can also disable this process if you'd like. This doesn't happen on every query. Metabase uses those syncs and scans to retrieve the table metadata and store it in the application database. Application Database is a separate database that Metabase uses to store data about Metabase. So stuff like users, settings, queries that you write, dashboards that you build, logs, and metadata about your database. So those column types and field values. Application Database is separate from the database where your data lives. If you're on a Metabase Cloud plan, you never have to worry about Application Database. That's something that we handle for you. But if you're self-hosting Metabase, you need to provision a separate database to serve as Metabase Application Database, preferably a Postgres database. So once Metabase syncs and scans your database and puts the metadata into Application Database, then when you build a question in the Query Builder, Metabase will know that a column that you told it to use has the type date because that information is stored in the application database. Now imagine if you have a dashboard that a lot of people look at all the time. For example, a dashboard with company metrics. Then every time 
every user looks at the dashboard, this process of querying, executing, and pulling the result has to happen. So, you can tell Metabase that you want to cache the results of frequent queries. For example, if your data doesn't change much, like let's say you're looking at quarterly metrics for your company, you don't need to do this retrieval process every time you open a dashboard because the results only change once a quarter. So if you enable caching, then Metabase will send the query, execute it, and then store the results in the application database. That means when someone executes the cached query, instead of executing in a database, it will just pull the results from the application database. Now, Metabase only caches the query results. So for example, if your query is computing the number of customers in this quarter, then Metabase will cache only this number and not the data about the customers that go into the computing this number. Your data always stays in your database. The final thing I want to talk about is model persistence. Models are derived data sets in Metabase, sort of like pre-joined, pre-computed alternative data sources that other people in your organization can use to build the queries instead of building them just based on the database tables. So on some databases, you can choose to enable model persistence, in which case the model that you built is persisted in your database as a table. So whenever someone builds a query based on a model, instead of executing the query for a model every time, it just goes to your database and retrieves the information from the already pre-populated table. This was a very high-level overview of some of the important ways that Metabase works with your database. If you'd like more details, check out the links in the description for each one of these processes. See you next time.